On this day, beautify me with covering and chastity, and on this day, cover me with the clothes of contentment and chastity, and on this day, let me adhere to justice and fairness, and on this day, keep me safe from all that I fear, by your protection, O the protector of the frightened. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem, bismillahi rahmani rahim, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're now at the 12th day of the blessed month of Ramadan and, and today we want to look at the topic of chastity and uprightness. And we know that living in societies that many of us live in, which are run by secular democracies, where the rules of the Almighty Creator are not allowed to flourish and be implemented, that one of the greatest challenges we face is that of displays of chastity within society whether it be rules prohibiting women from wearing modest clothing, whether it be uh, countries which have banned things, for example, of the hijab. This is an issue which obviously is of utmost importance to Muslims wherever they may live. To look at what the hadith, the sayings and the verses of the Quran talk about in terms of chastity, let us first reflect on a, a saying, a hadith, from the, Amir, from the commander of the faithful Imam Ali, may God's peace and blessings be upon him. In Najul Balagha, he has been quoted as saying the following The reward granted to one who struggles in the way of Allah, meaning one who is a mujahid, and is martyred, is no greater than the reward given to a person who displays chastity. It is almost as if the chaste one is an angel from amongst the angels. The Imam and the commander of the faithful shows us in this very beautiful tradition the importance of maintaining chastity within our lives. Chastity at many different levels, but first and foremost, we want to think about the chastity of the body that we have and the covering which Allah has implemented and instructed both men and women to observe within the societies that they live in. And the Imam shows us in this saying, the leader shows us in this saying, that one who struggles in the way of Allah and is martyred, who is killed on the battlefield, their reward is equivalent to that individual who displays chastity within the society that they live in. We have another hadith, again from the commander of the faithful, which we should reflect upon, in which he mentions the following statement. He says, The alms of beauty is to show chastity. <clears throat> this beautiful tradition gives us a very clear indication about this concept of charity of alms in Islam. And that alms is not just to give money to a hungry person or to a beggar or a food to a hungry person. Rather, we see that charity is actually an integral part of many uh, aspects of our lives. And so in this tradition, we're told that one who has beauty, one who uh, has a handsome face, one who is, uh, let's say, very muscular and very well physiqued, that their chastity or rather their charity is to show chastity not to try to attract the opposite gender through their looks, through their physique, through their, uh, through their handsome charm that they have, but rather to protect this, and this is their form of charity. And again, as we live in societies which does not value this issue of chastity, we need to reflect on the verses of the Quran, the sayings of our infallible prophet and the leaders of our religion to understand chastity from the religious perspective and then do our utmost to implement this within our day-to-day -day lives in whatever way we have possible. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.